Hello viewers, and welcome to Doomsday Radio Prepping, uh, Part 2. Um, the first video I put out had probably the most overwhelming response out of all of my videos. It's had 1,500 views in just a few days, and it's had the most feedback I've ever had, so I thought I would start another video. Some of the feedback I had was on uh, power, how to keep things charged. Um, one of the viewers had suggested uh, my radios uh, like this Bowfung are out of date and you can't charge it once the battery's dead. They felt that uh, running a USB battery would be best and then you could just carry some USB uh, battery chargers. And that's good. It's a, it's a good observation, and I thank him for his comment. Um, except I, I'm a ham radio operator, sir. I've thought of that. So what we have here is the eco-worthy 120-watt folding solar panel. There it is folded up. Here's an example of it unfolded. Let's see whether or not this solar panel was worth the money. I don't have a 12 volt battery here. What I do have is this booster pack, which will happily supply you 12 volts either by the socket or the cables. Let's not use that. So we're going to look here and I keep these battery packs, which will go to this radio here charged. Uh, and how I'm going to keep that charged in the field if I can't put a 9 volt on here and charge it is simply by this plug here and now I'm going to pause and oh maybe I can do this without pausing let's give it a try forgive the bad camera angle I'm just an old man with a smartphone let's uh it's a bit finicky. I did see it say charge a moment ago. Now it's not doing it. Well, would you look at that? You try and make a live YouTube or a uh, uh, unedited YouTube channel and this stuff just makes a fool out of you. I'll come back to that as it's making a fool out of me, but I have charged off of that before. It comes with this charge controller here. If that other idea lets you down, you want redundancy. So this is the charge controller for it. And I'll just pause here and plug in the wire. So here we're plugged directly into the solar. And you can see there's, there's no battery connected to the cables. I just have this one wire. And one of those cells is already full, the other one's charging. So I can recharge these battery packs with nothing more than this uh, charge controller in the panel. I'll pause here. Okay, <laughs> we did get it working to power this radio. The problem we had was this battery's already charged, so it just sat dead. And as I flip the radio around, it's being powered with no, no battery. That'll keep you going in the field. I'll pause here. And here I have it plugged into my 12 volt battery pack, or my, my booster pack. And uh, it comes with a bunch of these ends, one of which is for, uh, well, it's the newest USB for your phone, but you pretty much have it all. Uh, even I'm not sure exactly how it works out the power difference between the panel and the, uh, the device, but I do know it does work when you plug it in. Aside from keeping things charged, the next thing I would bring up when you're looking for signals on any radio, 
Uh, this one is a match to that other fancy handheld I showed you guys uh, yesterday, or uh, on the last video, I should say. Um, but when it comes to radios, uh, the antennas for this radio and this radio are far different than the high frequency antenna is going to be. Um, with this radio here, uh, I just have a short lead coming up to its regular antenna, a blade antenna. This one gives uh, a lot more performance as an antenna for transmitting than the one on this Bofeng. Um, it's, it almost triples what you can do. It's a pretty incredible antenna, but to make it work off of the handheld, you have to have it mounted on another piece of metal. And essentially what you're doing is creating an electrical dipole. Uh, antenna theory is the reason I say you should take the course and become a ham radio operator. It's not about having a license from your government. It's about having knowledge so that you're not destroying your equipment and, uh, and or having very poor performance. So this antenna has a drastically increased performance. Now when it comes to high frequency, um, your AM broadcast bands and your uh, shortwave broadcast bands, uh, this antenna here is a chameleon. Um, it's from their MPAS 2.0 set. So this is a, uh, I believe, a 5 to 1 unun. And uh, this is an extendable whip, 17 feet in length. It's not the whip that comes with the antenna. I purchased that after uh, because it is an extendable whip and a very good quality. I can uh, fine tune other bands. I do find when I use this antenna, it cost me two S units worth of signal strength, uh, both send and receive. And that's just the losses that you would get in the bellin. So for antennas, where I have to have my maximum uh, signal in and out, what we do is we go to what's called a Wolf River coil. And uh, this allows you to tune the antenna uh, via this collar. It shorts out the coil and creates different antenna lengths. And that just holds the original Chameleon uh, MPAS 2.0 whip. This is a two-part whip. And the uh, bottom part is four sections. The top part is seven. And they're not exactly equal lengths. So the entire antenna is around 17 feet. The antenna, if you'd heard the radio I was using... Um, on the last video or some of my previous videos what I'm using is this one here and what that is is a one-to-one -one, um, bellin uh, and the leads there's two of them uh, or uh, two on each side I should say so a total of four leads two were cut for the 40 meter band two were cut for the 20 meter band this is up at 30 feet and I can talk from Calgary, Alberta, all the way down to South California on one watt and get a good usable signal strength. Up above that, the other radio you would have seen on the, uh, my last video uh, that's mounted in the basement, that uses this antenna. Uh, and this antenna has a ground plane kit. It's for 2 meters and 70 centimeters, so the same band as your Bofeng handheld. But it's at 30 feet, and at that height, it gives me uh, a different distance in different directions. So to the east, it's a little weak. I only get about uh, 85 kilometers or, you know, around 60 miles. Uh, to the north, it's still weak, and I get a little bit less than that. I'm getting about uh, 40 kilometers 
or uh, or maybe you know 32 miles somewhere in there to the south however uh, it'll reach out over hundred and twenty miles and uh, I can connect to a repeater about hundred and twenty miles south of my my actual home which is pretty extreme but that repeater is up tall and so was my antenna uh, other than that that's all I wanted to throw into the second video is just uh, electrical redundancies and to talk just a little bit about antennas in my next video I will talk more so on antennas and I will show you a couple of antennas that I have experimented with and made. Uh, this little breakout antenna is one that I've experimented with and made. And the benefit to it is uh, if you uh, have a backpack, uh, Molly is a thing these days, the, the cross stitching I guess on everybody's body armor. And this will actually slip through that molly very perfectly and capture enough where it's quite secure, but not fully attached. So this was kind of a cool little idea. Uh, you know, typically I slip it in a backpack or, uh, or something of that fashion and uh, it works very, very well. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I got through to some of your questions. I know there was a viewer that had mentioned I'm talking about radio and I did not uh, mention which frequencies to monitor, what to listen for, or who to listen to. And perhaps I'll cover that uh, in a third video depending on how much traffic this video gets. I... Uh, I do just use my channel uh, for promoting amateur radio, uh, either volunteer or disaster or emergency amateur radio, and I don't really focus on the um, nuclear warhead over top doomsday scenario stuff that much. I just thought I'd do that as a conversation starter, and it took off. So. Okay, I guess I'll milk this cow. <laughs> but the purpose of my channel is just to uh, take people who are interested in radio and allow them to explore some of my thoughts, views, and opinions on radio and solar without having to spend any money to do it. <laughs>